Well, I just got off the phone with my 87-year-old father, and he went, what the hell's all that noise in the background? And I told him, I don't hear any noise. Is there any noise in the background? So I said that I'm here with a few thousand of my friends who are walking on the picket line at Cami fighting for great jobs, fighting for respect, fighting for dignity, fighting for all the things that we rightfully deserve. So, of course, my father's final advice to me is remember the three B's, son. It's be thorough, be brief, and be seated. Well, since my father's not here today, I'm going to take as long as I damn well please. I love the chant. NAFTA, NAFTA, we got the shafta. Well, you know what? No more are we going to get the shafta. Because it's time we took back the politics of our nation. It's time we took back the politics of trade agreement that are all about corporate rights and not about workers' rights. And it's about time we change the conversation. I read a newspaper article the other day, and you know, I, I scratch my head sometimes at the nativity of people. And the whole article was about uniform, our role in politics, the voice that we're portraying. And the, the, the voice in the article said, you know, we just wish the labor movement would take your nose out of politics. Well, I'll say to you, we'll take our damn nose out of politics when politics takes your nose out of our business. <laughs> you know, I listened to what the other speakers had to say, and I want to first start with my buddy Buck. Because we go a long way back, and Chris has been rather modest. Because Chris was the president of Local 222 in Oshawa. When just after signing the collective agreement with General Motors, weeks afterwards, they announced the closure of our truck plant. Went right through negotiations, carved the deal. They never said a word and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden they announced the closure of the truck plant without even the decency of raise it and bargaining. And then I remember, I remember five years ago when we were in bargaining with General Motors and there was a rumor that maybe the Camaro was going to be leaving Oshawa and it was going to be heading to the U.S. And so we raised with General Motors. What's this about the chatter we're hearing about the Camaro? The consolidation of rear wheel drive into a plant in the U.S. They said, nah, 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 it's just a rumor. Don't worry about it. And of course, we know six months after we signed the deal, GM announced that they were going to be moving our Camaro from our Oshawa complex and moving it to the United States. So when General Motors tells us in 2017, don't worry about the Equinox, well then I'm damn worried about the Equinox. Because we're not going to get fooled again and we're not going to get fooled by the employer that doesn't respect the contributions that we have made for so many years. So today, of course, the media is lighting up. And they're lighting up about the NAFTA renegotiations that are going to start again next week. Because the U.S. is starting to leak what they're putting out for next week. And the U.S. is talking about 50% rules of origin. In other words, 50% of all vehicle parts, manufacturing, everything has to be done in the United States. And we're saying to the United States, we might be a small nation, but we're not a stupid nation. We'll never ever fool. And then they're talking about, and here's the foolishness. They're talking about raising the rules of origin to 85%, which frankly, that talks about moving jobs from Europe, from Asia, back to the North American market. But the facts are, if we don't fix the fact that Mexican workers make 65 cents an hour, they make $2 an hour in assembly plants, then those jobs will leave Europe and Asia, but they'll just go to Mexico unless we fix the real problem, which is the wages for working class people in Mexico. <laughs> so we're also saying to the United States, you can be tough, you can throw all the grenades you want, but as long as you have a 2.5% tariff on all vehicles imported to the United States, 
The employers will just build in Mexico and build whatever they want and dump into the U.S. market and pay the lousy 2.5%. So the first thing that the U.S. has to do before they can learn how to bargain with Canada, they better learn how to bargain with themselves. So we're going to be in Washington next week. And once again, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about the poster child for what's wrong with NAFTA. And the poster child for what's wrong with NAFTA is occurring right here, right now, in Ingersoll, Ontario. And when people say this, and when the people and give her comments and talk about this openly, and when they say the role you're playing, you have to understand that it's true. Because NAFTA is 25% of the world market. And if we can get it right in NAFTA, and if we can make sure that it's a progressive workers' agenda, and if we can make sure that we can stop the exodus of strong manufacturing jobs from Canada, if we can get it right here in Canada, then we can get it right everywhere across the world, and that's why this is so important. So your fight, your fight is for our 2,800 members and their families in the four walls right behind you. Your fight is also for the 25 plus thousand jobs that depend on you. I'm talking to our sisters and brothers from Otrans. I'm talking to our sisters and brothers from St. Catharines. I'm talking to union and non-union workers across the province that right now are out of work. Why? Because of this dispute. So this dispute is really about the impact that it has on the economy and the role of the auto industry in a strong and stable economy. So when we say that you are fighting for your community, you're fighting for much more than that. You're talking about the basic principles of good jobs. You're talking about a progressive trade agreement. You're not only making the fight on behalf of your community, you're not only making the fight on behalf of our country, but you're making the fight on behalf of working class people across the world. They're not demanding trade agreements that benefit workers and not just corporations. So I want to compliment Mike Van Bokel, who I speak to several times every day. Dan Borthwick, your bargaining committee. But more importantly, we can't do this without you. Because we understand what this is all about. This is about solidarity. This is about us understanding the fight. And this is about us being determined as we say time and time and time again, this is about us lasting one day longer. Let's get it done, sisters and brothers. Thank you for your solidarity.